This is uh, Morten from Inkis TV, and I had the pleasure, again, I mean, I always say this because I always like talking to a lot of different people, and this time I had the pleasure to talk to Neil from FESPA. So, uh, Neil, uh, before we talk about some of the questions I've prepared, maybe you just can give a short introduction to who you are. Yeah, thanks, Morten. Uh, my name is Neil Felton. I'm the CEO of FESPA, uh, a global organization uh, representing 37 national associations and um, shows around the world, which I think you know about. Yeah, I have heard about FESPA before I came. I will admit that. So yeah, <laughs> not entirely yeah. new, right? <laughs> right. Um, when, when I looked at uh, your LinkedIn profile uh, yesterday, when I was preparing the, the questions, I saw that you have been with FESPA for 10 years. And I was just wondering, uh, first of all, I think it must be quite exciting because from the outside, it seems that FESPA is both as an organization, but also as um, an exhibition uh, uh, organizer has grown tremendously. And we're going to talk to talk about that in a second but do you remember the first time you attended the FESPA show and how it was yeah. like for you yeah I do I had arrived at FESPA I'd been at FESPA for two weeks and then oh, I really so that was so new weeks. <laughs> and then I was thrown in the deep end I met a lot of the press at the first show which had been 2011 in Hamburg so yeah I remember it very very well so it was uh it was an eye-opener to see because uh, I've been in trade shows for a very long time, uh, but to actually become part of a federation with trade shows um, and to see the quality of the show was just high end. I came from food shows with small little stands and then I come here and you see the likes of HP and Canon and Durst and all these companies presenting these fantastic stands with really high end, high tech products. It was it was eye opening, I have to say. Mm. And I can imagine that the. Uh... Uh, a combination of fascination and maybe a little bit scared to see the technology that I mean I, I think still a lot of people think of the printing industry just as phone books and newspapers right yes. and today uh, it's so diverse and, and with way way more uh, product offerings um, um, how was I mean from your perspective again was that new to you or did, well, did you I, did, I had did this you... image as many people do which is completely and totally incorrect that the print industry is um, quite a an old-fashioned industry I imagined uh, you know uh, various types of uh, print factories which was completely and totally different within about two or three weeks of me starting at FESPA I had the pleasure of going to uh, one of the leading print um, manufacturers or print companies in uh, the UK and it was a completely different world that I walked into. I mean, high tech, uh, technology, design, um, color, inspiration. It was completely and totally different to what I expected. So it was a, a pleasant surprise. And interestingly, for every year since then, I'm finding out more and more interesting things about printing. So I'm becoming a bit of a print geek, even though I wasn't traditionally from that sector. Scaring, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is how easy, how easy it is to get passionate about this wonderful industry we serve. Yeah, and it is a wonderful industry. And I think that uh, the segment uh, where, where FESPA uh, kind of excels has grown tremendously. I mean, I remember, uh, maybe you've seen that too, you remember Frank Romano, he wrote a book together with a student called New Print. And, and I remember he said that, okay, New Print is more like things are moving into the printing industry. We, so, we sometimes think that communication goes out to the internet, but actually large format came from from signage, which was, you know, totally different from today. Uh, uh, you have textile coming from more like the conventional kind of ways of doing this. So when you look at the industry and, and all and, and all the the sub segments uh, that FESPA covers, um, um, is it uh, uh, an endless opportunity, or or will it also flatten out, or or how do you see that? I think you've got to look at it. That there are many different sectors that we deal with. I mean, we, we often say that uh, we are a community, but actually we're a variety of communities. Mm -hmm. And I think each of those has their own challenges, but their own opportunities. So you mentioned textile. Textile's got huge growth opportunity in digital textile, whether that be an interior decor or garments or clothing or whatever. That's a fascinating area. Then you look at the billion dollar industry, which is the vehicle wrap market, but that's also growing into, text, uh, into decor wrap. So mm -hmm. there's a whole range of things. So if you say, is it flattening out? I think in certain sectors, you could say it's flattening out, but in mm -hmm. other areas, uh, textile, wrap, uh, signage, there's a whole range of new ways in which we can um, grow and build into opportunities. So I think that actually it's more exciting than ever. I was excited 10 years ago and I'm even more excited now. Must be nice to go and work uh, with, a, with an even bigger excitement, right? Well, you've got to. If you don't yeah. love what you're doing, why are you doing it? 
Yeah, precisely. Um, um, as I can hear from you, of course, we I think we're both fascinated about the technology and, and how things are, are developing in that perspective. One of the challenges that a lot of people see in this industry is how to attract younger people. And I was just wondering, since you are in uh, the FESPA segment, so to speak, is also textile and more, maybe more fashion and, and you know, also uh, shop decorations, these kind of things, do you think it's... Uh, and maybe uh, easier to attract young people to this segment of the printing industry, or, or is, is it also a challenge here? Well, our, our segments that we uh, that we represent are certainly the most attractive segments. I would, of course, say that. But um, the speciality print market—you <laughs> had to, right? <laughs> well, I have to, but it's true. The speciality print market, whether it be uh, wide format graphics for advertising, or whether it be for decor or clothing or whatever it is, um, they are really interesting areas. I think the real challenge that we have is being able to sell ourselves as well as. Yeah. Possible. And there are some incredible things that we do out there. I mean, we looked at the uh, the Rotterdam market where they've got the most amazing interior design with print in there. And if you can start bringing these examples to life, that's something which is really engaging to younger people. But we know we're in competition with many, many different industries. And we just need to keep on showing what the best things in our industry can do. And I promise you they'll get excited because the majority of people out there in my office, they're all younger and much younger than me. Um, and they are all fascinated by print, but we had to sell it to them. And we need to keep yeah. on selling them the power of print more and more. Yeah. Um, you know, we spoke about before the camera turned on, we spoke about that uh, the uh, some of the crisis that you have. We, we spoke funny about all the crisis, of you, but, but I was particularly thinking about uh, the financial crisis in in commercial print that changed you know using the internet more and more as a sales platform but not just as a sales platform but also you know a, a marketplace for new business models is that something you also see in the FESPA segment i think it has to i mean we had uh, i was at the global summit in thailand just before the pandemic back in 2020 it feels so long ago now and we had a talk by a gentleman from printful which is a very innovative company in uh, mm -hmm. in in the baltics and they yeah. do fantastic work using the internet as their major platform in which they can provide print so i think we have to be uh, yeah. We have to be mindful of what they're doing. You can look at Simpress as well, uh, based in, yeah. in Holland. So we've yeah. got so many different um, companies which are moving into that space. And I think that if you looked at the three biggest challenges our industry faces, um, the internet and the opportunities, uh, the internet and uh, printing using that medium is possibly one of the, a very powerful one. We've also got automation, which is really important as well, and sustainability. Those are the mm. three major topics which I think we'll be discussing and the market will be discussing for years to come. Mm. And um, I take that uh, being a, both a federation and also uh, uh, an organizer, I mean, you I mean, you can show or uh, I mean, you can show to the audience when they attend a festival show that you can see you, they can see the environmental agenda. They can see the workflow automation, you can see things. But is it also so that you can use that to influence your members through uh, the memberships and through the membership organizations locally? Well, the, the associations are uh, the heart of our business. So if you think you've got 37 national associations and they help guide us about what their members are telling them, you know, we've got over 14,000 members uh, who are members of our 37 national associations and they advise the associations and the associations work with them. And we're just in a very lucky position that we can actually speak to a whole variety of stakeholders. We're not in it for profit. We're in it to reinvest back into the industry. Mm. And that can continual dialogue with our markets through our associations, our printers, our suppliers, the distributors of those suppliers gives us a very, very clear indication of what's happening in the market and what the future of the market holds. And, and that in return, of course, also makes it a lot uh, very interesting for exhibitors to attend a FESPA show because you have this close relation and you have this give back. Uh, a philosophy to the to the industry. Um, moving a little bit forward, uh, we're soon going to talk about the first by Amsterdam, and you know we're covering it, and we look very much much forward to go there. I was just wondering, the pandemic is still for a lot of people influencing uh, travel and uh, maybe also the willingness to go. But before we talk about that. Um, how stressful was it for you and your team uh, with FESPA because I, uh, in, with the pandemic because you, you experienced uh, postponements and cancellations uh, like uh, the rest of the industry. So how was it for, uh, for you, uh, both personally, but also as an organization? Well, it was, it was stressful for me personally and for my team. I, I think 
The way that we got through it is I'm very lucky. I've got an incredibly good team. Yeah. And that team are the people that provided us with the strength to keep on going with the ideas and ways in which we can still serve the market. And it also helps the fact is you've got 37 national associations. I've got a board of eight uh, who are my bosses in effect, and they're all printers. So we are all in it together. And I think that made it much easier. If anything, I think the pandemic, there's a lot of positives that have come out of the pandemic. And one oh, yeah. of the major positives is the fact that we had time to sit back, look, plan and strategize about what our next steps are and what we can do. And I think that's really, really a positive thing to come out of the pandemic. The rest of it was really tough, don't get me wrong. But um, No, 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 I'm not getting you wrong at all. Keeping me sane, that's that's one of the biggest challenges. The, the team helped us get through all of it, and I think we worked really well through it. Mm. And of course, the, the question you have to ask, is it over now? I mean, will we see more cancellations or are we over the worst of the pandemic now, in your opinion? In my opinion, we're over the worst. Um, of mm. course, I'm not Tony Fauci uh, from the CDC in America, so I'm not going to give you uh, any ideas from that perspective. But we seem as if we are over the worst. We feel that there's a very strong demand. I think one of the questions which you said you may want to ask me when we discussed it earlier is that how quickly do you think we can get back to where yeah, we to were? Yeah, All more normal are that by 2022 we'll be back to where we were. So our exhibitors are very, very keen, as are our printers, to get back back to um, a top trade show such as FESPA and a top networking and association meeting point that FESPA is um, by 2022. And they see Amsterdam as the perfect launch place in ways in which they can start getting back to building business, uh, having more connections and actually creating something powerful to regenerate the industry. Is that sooner than you anticipated? Um, I would say it's it's about right because the whole point is as long as we provide ourselves with a strong show supported by all of our stakeholders, then I think that it's very logical that we should be doing that as soon as possible. And I think, mm. you know, May 2022, you're going to see that come back. But also what the energy I see in Amsterdam, the show there, you know, there are lots of new launches and all sorts of incredible products, which the market hasn't seen for 18 months. And mm. now is your chance to see them. Mm. We're going to talk to to you about Amsterdam, of course. That is just uh, it's only like uh, t almost two weeks ago uh, ahead of us, right? Uh, and That's just true. before, yeah, I'm just asking a question. So, uh, were you afraid that you had to cancel uh, Amsterdam as well, or how was that for you? I think uh, we we made plans as if we may have to, but we didn't think yeah. we would. Uh, I think that's okay. the best way to do it. I mean, we, we certainly, what the pandemic has taught us is that you need to have backup plans and uh, nothing is always really straightforward. But now it's very, very clear. The Amsterdam show is happening and uh, we've got everything in place to have a safe, secure and energized environment. Yeah, I, I read both on, on your website, but also on Rai, uh, the exhibition place website, that it seems that there's been, I mean, taking a lot of precautions and a lot of guidance to make people having a great thing. And, and you know, it's, I mean, I've been traveling the past many weeks now and it's definitely getting easier day by day. So that's good. Um, Neil, um, Amsterdam, uh, what to expect? Look, get back into the industry, get back into finding out what's happening out there. What are the new products? Speak to your your colleagues, the associations around the world. You know, what we need to do is we need to knit together to provide the platform for moving forward in the specialty print market. And uh, as you know, you've done many of these with Zoom calls, etc. You can get a lot oh, of information yeah. from these. But well, we get a little bit tired of them, right? <laughs> Sorry? We get a little bit tired of all these We get, we get a bit tired of it, and I want to speak to people. And the best example I can give is that we had a strategy day here, what, about a month ago or so, and we had everybody in, and we had round... In person. Round, in person. We had 20 <laughs> yeah. really good ideas that we would never have got if we weren't meeting face-to-face. -face. And I would say about five or six of those were by complete chance whilst we were having a cup of coffee. So yeah. what I'm saying was from an exhibition perspective, whether it be FESPA or any exhibition really right now, people need to get back to meeting people. And, yeah. and, and actually talking and looking at the product, touching and feeling the product. So Amsterdam, I am so enthused about and I'm really thankful. We've got some amazing launches happening. Great. Have you heard about anything that is like a, a really new idea that may be also spawned out of the, uh, the post-pandemic time? I think there's quite a few different ideas which you come out. You, you'll see them at the show, certainly. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and people say, so what launches are you looking forward to? It's too difficult. There are so many because you've had 
18 months where people haven't been able to do a global launch and now they can. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've got a lot of exhibitors who are launching. So singling out one is difficult, but there are certainly three or four which are going to be really, really strong and powerful, which will help the industry move forward. Oh, can't wait. Um, I mean, just for fun. So who is the biggest exhibitor this year? I, I, re I honestly, I don't know the answer. I know we've got several big ones. We've got to give our thanks out to people like Roland and Durst and Canon, and, and yeah. there's a whole range of clients who really support us. Um, so yeah, but um, uh, I don't know which has got the largest stand. I, I was just asking, you know, sometimes pre-pandemic, it was like, who was the biggest exhibitor at Drupa? Who was the biggest exhibitor here, there, right? So it was just like a little, uh, a little game kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, And uh, I, you maybe already kind of uh, answered this because you say there's a lot of uh, very interesting thing coming up. Do you have any personal favorite must-see thing from your on your agenda? Um, must-see agenda. First of all, print series. <clears throat> we have print series, which is one of the features of the show, and it's got some really high-end design. And we've taken some high-end design, and we're going to show all the different applications and how you can present this design um, in its. It was inspired actually by the Madrid Botanical Gardens, and so it was oh. really, uh, really beautiful. So much so that I want to actually take some of the wallpaper that we printed. But it, it, to see it in operation, to see what wide format print can do and speciality print can do, and all the varieties of ways in which you can present a design, to me, is fascinating. So Printerius is amazing. World Wrap Masters, of course, to find um, the European champion, which we'll be finding in Amsterdam, uh, to go to the World Wrap Masters in Berlin. Always fun always, to see these wrapping competitions, right? Always great. I mean, <laughs> yeah. last time we were in Holland, I, I think we did one video and over five million people have seen that video. So it's really, yeah, okay, it's a really fascinating for not just our market, but for people outside of our market looking in. I was wondering, uh, I mean, sometimes you see really cars that are really challenging. I think you, you saw the new uh, uh, the Tesla truck, which is like almost like square sp yeah. space, a spaceship, right? I'm wondering if that will ever be a wrap in something because it looked like a little bit more like a challenge, right? But well, who knows? I think, I think that is wrapped. I think that's probably ah, some sort okay. of Matt Silver. So yeah, I probably uh, imagine it is wrapped, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Neil, uh, I have no question that, that uh, the exhibitors, of course, are eager to show new products and solutions. So uh, what is it? How, how do you see the interest from the, the visitors? Is it uh, going according to plan or how is that? It's going according to plan. I think people are making their decisions based um, clearly on all the things which they're seeing. And there's so many things which are happening right now. It's difficult to manage all the channels and all the information. But uh, I, I expect there to be a very strong show with good attendance. And most importantly, I think it's It's about the quality of the attendance. The people that are going to the show oh, yeah. need to look and they need to buy things. They're not going to go there yeah. unless they have to. And I think that's really, really important. And they realize how important FESPA is as a place in which they can source new products and actually discover and compare the various products that they could be buying. Mm. And, and that leads me also to one of the questions uh, uh, we spoke about before. And that was like, um, uh, you know, I met a guy It was. He was not. He was not in the trade show, but he was. A, you know, like a security kind of person from. I think it was from a print show in Chicago. You mm -hmm. know, way year year ago, and he said to me, "There's something these organizers forget when they always talk about numbers." And it is that in the 70s and the 80s, it was a party for the printing company to go, so they were 10, 15, 20 people per yeah. per per potential buyer, right? And today it is becoming a more like business oriented. You take out time to visit you. You have maybe one, two, three stakeholders from a company that make the decisions and mm. it's becoming way more dense, right? Well, it's about return on investment. Uh, for our yeah. exhibitors, it's about a return on investment in making sure that their products can get across to the market, not just selling it, but promoting it uh, in creating their brands. So return on investment for them. But for the printer, it's about return on investment for them. They yeah. need to make big decisions about what they're going to be doing moving forward. And there is no better way than going to one place where you can compare all of the different products and discover ones which you don't know about. And it goes back to a gentleman, one of our uh, many, many printers who supports us, uh, Nick from the UK, who runs a very large corrugated plant. He says, you don't know what you don't know. And the amount of times that he's come across something which he had no idea was actually happening or as advanced as it could be. And that's the same with regard to Keith from Australia or Alberto from Italy or all of these printers who are saying, look, I discover things I did not know exist or didn't know they were at that level yet. 
at a show such as FESPA. And I think that's one of the major reasons. The printers that come to FESPA are the forward-looking printers, the ones which will be successful into the future because they've already seen what the future has to hold. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Uh, the only thing I can say is that I look very much forward to go to Amsterdam. Uh, I will be there on the 12th and 13th, and we have a plan to cover 150 booths in two days. So I take that we will be quite busy, mm -hmm. but uh, we will do anything we can to support uh, both your mission and, and of course the PSPs and converters in the world, uh, showcasing uh, all the good stuff from Facebook. And a uh, warm thank you for your time here. And also, uh, really warm congratulations that the show is back on track well so it's back on track it's going to be really really pushing 150 exhibitors you're going to be working very hard to get through those in two days um but i'm sure you'll have a great time we look forward to seeing you there and having having a beer maybe at the end of a busy day i hope so thank you very much neil all right then great stuff thank you